I want to talk about um, what exactly is the meaning of the parable of the Good Samaritan. <clears throat> now, this uh, parable has a lot of lessons, and uh, we have to understand. And uh, first, before we even uh, uh, talk about this, I want to show you a short, a short clip uh, concerning the same, so that uh, we can be able to understand. But uh, first, I have to show this uh, corporate disclaimer so that I. I can always be in the good books with uh, YouTube. <laughs> okay. So now, having shown that, let me show a short video here. Now, I want you to look at this. Now, this, this is a story about uh, the Good Samaritan. There was a, a man who was uh, traveling. Uh, he was traveling, I, I think, from Jerusalem to Jericho. Yes. And... Uh, just along the way when he was going, everything was fine, but uh, the road at the place where he was uh, traveling at, the, it, it was prone to thieves. There was always so many thieves in that area, and I think uh, something happened. The thieves uh, got hold of him, and they beat him. Some robbers, they, they beat him. They, they took away with this maybe what he had, and they stripped him naked and left him half dead. That's exactly how life is. Sometimes it, it does a lot to us. It strips us naked <laughs> sometimes because Satan only comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. And that's, the thieves are just a, a picture of Satan, what he does. Okay? So now, <laughs> at the same time, a priest passed by. And uh, this priest was, uh, of course, presumably priest, a good guy. They're supposed to be like people who take care of the people. And do like do good things because they, they know things of God. But <laughs> he just looked by and passed the guy and uh, walked on the other side. He didn't even care. He just went his way. And uh, at the same same time, a Levite also passed by. A Levite is uh, someone who really understands uh, the law. So presumably, according to the people, this is uh, someone who is supposed to understand what's supposed to be done, okay? But they just looked at the man and they passed away, just just like the priest, he didn't care. He didn't care. He just said, okay, let it be. But at the same time, <laughs> there was a, a Samaritan who passed by. And this Samaritan had compassion. He had a lot of compassion. And remember, Samaritans were not even... They are not Jews. They are not even. There are people who are who seem to be low according to the to, to the standards of the Jews, but he had passion. And then he cleaned up his wounds and uh, tried to apply some oil and and things like that, so that he can try and nurse this person as much as he could. Cleaning up his wounds, he had action. It's not just love without action. And he put him on his donkey. Okay. You can imagine if someone is putting you on your donkey, then he will walk and you will be there. So that's, that's showing love. And he took him to a lodge nearby where he can uh, take care of him much more and try to see if maybe he can uh, recover in some way. He took care of this man. You see the kind of compassion which this uh, Samaritan had? For a stranger, total stranger, someone who he did not even know. He took care of him, and uh, the next morning, he told uh, the owner of the lodge, Hey, uh, I'm leaving uh, for some few days, but uh, here are some two denarius or pennies or whatever it was in that, in that time, the currency. And he left some two denarius and said, Okay, this one is for the expenses that... Uh, uh, you're going to incur now, but if there is any other more expenses, I'm going to pay when I come back. I'm going to pay. Just just put the bill on me. I'm going to pay it back. Now think think about this story. Think about this story. Think about this Samaritan and and what really happened. Now I want to give you a picture. I wanted you to see that so that I can I can explain something here. Now, guys, you have to understand that the parable of the Good Samaritan is uh, precipitated by and uh, in, is in, in an answer to a question posed by 
to, to Jesus by a lawyer. There was a certain lawyer who asked a question to Jesus, and this was just a, an answering way. Jesus wanted to answer this, but he thought, ah, I don't want arguments. Let me just give a story, and then he can uh, they can uh, do the math. In uh, this case, the lawyer would have been an expert in the Mosaic law and not a not a court lawyer of today. The lawyer's question was very simple. Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now, let's come here to this story. You see, the Bible says in the book of Luke 10.25, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer, mm -hmm, a very knowledgeable person. This, this is a picture of, of the people who have the, the wisdom of the world. People who know some things. Lawyers are people who have the wisdom of the world. He stood up and tempted him. You see? You see? You see, the people of the world will try to tempt and say, oh, is there, is God really real? Is, is all these things uh, as, as they say? He said, Master, what shall I do to uh, uh, turn it, uh, uh, inherit eternal life? This person was, he may be asking sincerely, or but <laughs> there's a way that he wanted to tempt Jesus and see, okay, I need to hear what this man will say concerning this. Eh? What do I need to do? You know, he was thinking in the angle of do. What do I need to do? Look at what Jesus told him. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Hmm. Because Jesus already understood and, and he knew, <laughs> okay, this man understands there is a law. At least that one we can both agree, both of us. So he just asked him according to what he knew. He asked him, okay, what does the law say? Uh -huh. well, how do you read the law? How do you interpret it? And the he answering said, Thou shalt love thy, thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. This is a, he was quoting, I, I believe he was quoting um, Deuteronomy 6.5. Okay? He was quoting Deuteronomy 6.5. That, that's how he, understand the, he understood the law. And also, uh, uh, Leviticus 19 verse 18, which says, Thou shalt not avenge or bear any grudge against against uh, uh, others, okay? Okay? Are, are you getting the point here? So, <laughs> he said unto him, okay, he said unto him, Thou has answered right. This do, okay? This do, and thou shalt live. Are you seeing the point here? <clears throat> Jesus has told him, okay, do this, and you will live. Exactly. But this person is not even <laughs> is not even uh, 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 satisfied with the answer which Jesus has said because he has a, a, a provocative thing that he wants to he wants to put Jesus into a test. This is the same way people will be told, oh, Jesus saves, but uh, oh, how does he really save? Are you sure he saves? Uh, oh, how comes he was not he did not just die for nothing? How come people just want to argue for no apparent reason? Look at this. But he willing to justify himself. You see? People do all those things trying to justify themselves. They try to justify themselves. Say that to Jesus. And who is my neighbor? You see? He brought in another. He wanted to argue. People just want to argue for nothing. Now, instead of that, instead of Jesus arguing with him, he gave him a story. Okay? He gave him a story. The story of the Good Samaritan. And I'll go quickly and explain to you this. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on by the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and uh, when he saw him, he had compassion on him. I want you to mark that word, compassion. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pour, pouring oil and wine, okay? Oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, donkey, and brought him into an inn or a guest house and took care of him. And on the morrow of the following day, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host, the owner of the lodge, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever he thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now Jesus, after saying that story, he asks this lawyer, 
Which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Now, look at how the lawyer will answer. Just the same way all of us we answer questions. He did not say the Samaritan. Mm -mm, no, he did not say that. Why? Because he's still proud. You see, the wisdom of this world is very proud. Always trying to tell her, to, to say things in a different way. Look, look at this. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Who is he that showed mercy? He has given three, three people example. A Samaritan, a Levite, and a, a priest. You could just have said the Samaritan. But because the world does not want to say, <coughs> they, uh, they, they, they don't want to buy the picture that Jesus is there. They want to argue. They just want to say, okay, you can be good as long as uh, this and this. Uh, but I'm good. But this one is good. But this one happens this way. People just want to justify themselves in all ways. And that lawyer is a picture of people, how they try to justify themselves. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do thou likewise. Jesus, not, Jesus did not want to argue. He said, okay, okay, you've heard it. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, okay, we have to understand this question which this person asked, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This question provided Jesus with an opportunity to define what uh, his disciples' relationship should be to their neighbors. The, the text says that the scribe, who is the lawyer, had put the question to Jesus as a test. He wanted to tempt him. Ah, okay, let's hear. But the text does not indicate that there was hostility in the question. No, there was no hostility. He was not like hostile. Or, hey, no, he wanted to test, tempt. Because Satan does not come arguing like a oh. he, he, he just comes slowly like I want to tempt you. The, the way Satan was tempting Eve, in the Garden of Eden, saying, "Did uh, God uh, really say that? Uh, did God say this that uh, you will die when you eat from that tree? Did Did He really say that? You see, He comes slowly because He comes slowly because tempting. If I want to tempt you, I don't tempt you by force. I want to see is there a way that you're going to slide into some error." Remember, even when Satan was tempting Jesus, He did not come and say, "Oh, throw yourself there." No. He did not, he came and said, it is written, when you throw yourself, uh, some angels will be sent to do this. You know, he speaks in a small voice. But the text does not indicate that he was hostile in his question. That's one thing we have to understand. Now, he could have simply been seeking information. That's one thing. Maybe he was just seeking information, or maybe he was just... Uh, some guy who just likes to argue. But uh, the wording of the question does, however, gives us some light or some insight into where the scribe's heart was uh, scripturally or sp in, in spir spiritually, where his heart was, that, kind, that lawyer. He was making the assumption that man must do something to obtain eternal life. There's, there's something that I need to do so that I can attain eternal life. Although this could have been an opportunity for Jesus to discuss salvation issues, he chose a very different course and focused on our relationships and what it means to love. Okay. Now we have to understand, huh? Jesus answered this question using a, a formula, a certain formula, what we call a Socratic method. Have you ever heard about the Socratic method of teaching? Okay, this is whereby you answer a question with a question. Huh? L let me read for you here what they explain. When using the Socratic method, remember, don't give students a direct answer. That's, that's how Jesus did it. You offer questions in place of answers. You just, okay, you help them to understand using another question. You ask someone. That, that's Jesus is very wise. And he knew here it will be an argument of the whole day. So he just gave them a question. <laughs> so that when they answer, they already know what is in Jesus' mind. Okay? So, Jesus basically said to him, what is written in the law? What does the law say? Well, what is it that the law says? And what's your reading of it? Or what's your interpretation of that law? In 1026, Luke. 
And uh, by referring to the law, Jesus is directing the man to an authority they both would accept as truth. The Old Testament. Both of them, they could agree to the Old Testament. Okay? They both agree to that. In essence, he is asking the scribe, what does scripture say about this? And how does, do, do you interpret it? How do you interpret it? Okay? The, the question of my neighbor. Okay? How do you interpret it? Actually, he had not come to my neighbor, sorry. He was just saying, this question of uh, love one another and love this uh, according to Deuteronomy, uh, the Old Testament. How do you interpret the aspect of love? You know, how do you uh, interpret it? Jesus, therefore, he just avoided an argument and put himself in the position of evaluating the scribe's answer instead of the scribe evaluating his answer. You see how Jesus played, <laughs> he played this uh, Socratic method? Just, he said, oh, let me, let, let me hear what you have to say concerning this instead of you hearing me. Yeah? You want to play my game? I'll play yours. And that this directs the discussions towards Jesus' intended lesson. The scribe answers Jesus' question by quoting, of course, he quoted the law, where I told you, Deuteronomy 6, 5 and Leviticus 19, 18, concerning love. And this is virtually, virtually the same answer that Jesus had given to the same question in Matthew 22 and also Mark chapter 12. And in verse 28, Jesus affirms that the lawyer's answer is correct. He said, okay, what you've said is very correct. Very true. Yes, very true. Mm -hmm. Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. That, that's true. Jesus said, okay, that's, that's true. That's very true. Okay? But Jesus' reply <laughs> tells the scribe that he has given an orthodox, just a general, scripturally a proper answer. But then, goes on in verse 28 to tell him that this kind of love requires more than emotional feeling. It would also include an orthodox practice. You see, you, you, you can just say, I, 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 I love this person, but do you really show? Because in our modern day churches and modern day uh, religions, we, we, just, we, just love, uh, we just love by saying, but our actions, they don't really show. So do you really mean what you say? Do you practice what you preach? Remember, the scribe was an educated man, that lawyer. And he realized that he could not possibly keep that law. Or would, uh, nor would he have to, uh, you know, keep on, maybe he had to keep on thinking about it and trying so much to keep that law. And he knew definitely he cannot do it. There will always be people in this life that he could not love and this is common to everyone there's always that one person who will just say oh no hey, this one <laughs> this one i have neighbors but this one no let let him go there's always that one person you feel uh, -uh. therefore he tries to limit the law's commands by limiting its parameters and asks the question who is my neighbor he asks jesus who is my neighbor then okay who is my neighbor and the word neighbor in the Greek, it means uh, someone who is near. And in Hebrew, it means someone that you have an association with. And this interprets the word in a limited sense, referring to a fellow Jew. Okay. And I would have excluded Samaritans, Romans, and other foreigners. But uh, Jesus <laughs> knew all this. And then he gives the parable of the good Samaritan to correct the false understanding that the scribe that that this scribe had of uh, the aspect of who his neighbor is and what his duty is to his neighbor. So he wanted to correct all that because people thought only my neighbor is the one who is near me and uh, maybe members of my church. Those are the people I should take care of and things like that. But Jesus wanted to correct and say, no, <laughs> your neighbor, you think is only the person near you? So this parable of the Good Samaritan tells the story of a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, like I've shown you. <clears throat> and while on the way, he's robbed of everything he has, including his clothing, and is beaten to within an inch of his life. 
And uh, that road was uh, a bad road where always, uh, you know, it was a favorite hideout of robbers and thieves. And the next character that Jesus introduces in, <laughs> in this, uh, the next character that Jesus introduces is who? Is a priest. He spends no time describing the priest and only tells of how he showed no love or compassion for the man by failing to help him, uh, to help him and passing on the other side of the road. He did not even want to get involved. If there was anyone who could have uh, known God's law or, or, of love, eh, it would have been the priest. Because these people, they, they, they preach the Bible and they, they, they preach, hey, love, this, love, that. They knew the commandments. It would have been him. By nature of his position, he was to be a person, a person of compassion, desiring to help others. Unfortunately, love was not a word for him that required action. He did not require any action on the behalf of someone else. It was just something that he reads in the Bible. The next person to pass by was who? <laughs> the next person to pass by was the Levite. Uh, Levite. And he does exactly what the priest did. He passes by without showing any compassion. Again, he would have known the law, but he also failed to show the injured man compassion. He didn't. But uh, <laughs> the next person to come was the Samaritan. The Samaritan. Okay? The Samaritan. And uh, this Samaritan was one of the least likely people to have shown compassion to that man. Why? Samaritans were considered uh, some low class people by the Jews since they had intermarried with the non-Jews and did not keep all the law. Therefore, Jews would have nothing to do with them. And we do not even know if the injured man was a Jew or a Gentile. But it meant no difference to the Samaritan. He did not even consider the man's race or religion. The good Samaritan only saw a person in dire need of assistance. And uh, decided to assist him and above and beyond the minimum required he did everything else apart from just assisting him and just and just uh, seeing all oh, this person as no he did much more he dressed the man's wounds with wine wine is uh, to disinfect and oil to soothe the pain he, he he put the man on his animal and took him to an to 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 some lodge okay to some place where he can uh, he can uh, take some time to heal and pay the, the large man with his own money. He then goes beyond common decency and tells the, the large guy to take good care of the man and uh, that he would pay for any extra expenses on his return trip. So, <laughs> the Samaritan just saw his neighbor as anyone who was in need. He did not really say, oh, it, it has to be this or this. Or... No, it was anyone who was in need. That's what exactly the Samaritan did. Because the good man, this Samaritan, with this kind of story, Jesus is drawing a strong contrast between those who knew the law and those who actually followed the law. And they are in their lifestyle and conduct. You can be there, you just say, oh, I follow the law, I am really good about the law, I am following, I am doing this. But you don't even mean it from your heart. Remember, <coughs> Jesus himself, excuse me, Jesus himself, he said, he asked some, some person, uh, I don't know what they were, were talking about, and then Jesus said, the law says do not kill. But I say that even the person who hates his brother, that's already a killer. Because the law should be from your heart, not just in some tablets or some place where you recite. You should understand it and it should be in your heart. He put another level, another standard of understanding this law. Okay? So you should, if you claim that you love, then love should be shown, not only just spoken. Because God looks at the intentions of our hearts. You may be helping someone who is needy, but uh, you just want to help because you want to show people on Instagram. You just want to post some nice videos and nice photos and uh, show people, hey guys, you see I help this poor, poor person who did not have anything. Hey, see these photos. You already have your reward. But uh, <laughs> Jesus, remember, after that he asked, um, 
he asked the lawyer if he can apply the lesson to his own life with a question so which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him the person who fell uh, on the thieves among the thieves he asked the lawyer the lawyer is just any other person out there who has the wisdom of the world he just asks you okay between the three who was the person who showed compassion between the three definitely <laughs> the lawyer instead of a uh, explaining and saying is a samaritan they still show hardness of the heart the same way the people of the world they are like when you show them the proof of jesus they'll still say but uh, you see it's just coincidence it's just they, they will not want to do what is right the lawyer's answer is just telling of his personal hardness of his heart he cannot bring himself to say the word samaritan he refers to the he just says the good man as he who showed mercy his hate for the samaritans his neighbors was so much he did not he did not love them jesus then tells the lawyer to go and do likewise meaning that he should start living what the law tells him to do my friends we 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 are just like this lawyer at times we just want to justify ourselves so much and we want to see the members of my church or the members of my family or my friends or my relatives or people who are close to me they're the only ones who are my neighbors they're the only ones who i'm supposed to love you should love even those who hate you love even those who hate you neighbor is anyone who is in need don't say oh this person is not on my class maybe we don't uh, we don't i'm in the boys club come on this person is a bit low it's, it's not like me come on and i want like that jesus loved all of us the the same way he did not uh, separate and say these people are low class these are high class this is no he did not he loved all of us neighbor is anyone who is in need by ending the encounter in this manner jesus is telling us to follow the samaritans example follow the samaritans example in our own conduct we have to show compassion and love those we encounter show some compassion and love to anyone that we encounter in our everyday activities we have to love others regardless of their race or religion or, or criterion whatever if they need and we have the supply then we have to give generously and free without expectation of return okay don't just say oh I i'm expecting this i'm expecting this because my neighbor is anyone in need whom we can help the samaritan was of a different race nationality religion from the jews but still that's the neighbor Christians are to have the heart of compassion for those in need regardless of the outward differences. Go and read Galatians 6:10 and Matthew 5:43 to 48. All right? But I know of course this is an impossible obligation for the lawyer and the most of us. And uh, we cannot always keep the law because of our human condition and our heart's desires are mostly of self and selfishness when 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 left to our own we do the wrong thing failing to meet the law we can hope that the lawyer saw this and came to the realization that there was nothing he could do to justify himself that he needed a personal savior to atone for his lack of ability to save himself from his sins therefore the lessons of the parable of the good samaritans are this let me give you the three lessons Number 1 we are supposed to set aside our prejudice okay set aside everything set aside everything and show love and compassion to others that's lesson number 1 number 2 our neighbor is anyone anyone that we encounter we are all creatures of the creator and we are to love all mankind as Jesus taught us and number 3 we have to understand that keeping the law in its uh, entirety okay with the intent to save ourselves it is it is a very impossible task we need jesus the savior 
Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. Okay? Think about Jesus being the good Samaritan. He is the good Samaritan. He loved without differentiating this from there, from there. Jesus is the Savior. If this person, this thief, the, I, I mean not thief, the, this person who was beaten by thieves, if he was sitting there and probably he had some hope that uh, a lawyer will come and help him or a priest will come and help him or uh, a Levite, my friends, he could have died there. If you're waiting for the world to help you, oh no, it can't work. Jesus is the only one who can save you. People are running to save themselves. It's only Jesus who can save you. If you think by keeping the law, the Levite will be on your side. No, they won't. The church will never be on your side. People will never be on your side. The prayer cannot be on your side. Giving your tithe cannot be on your side. Helping the needy cannot be on your side. Your good works cannot be on your side. It's only Jesus who can be on your side. And there's also another possible way to interpret the parable of the Good Samaritan. And that is as a metaphor. In this interpretation, the injured man is all men. This injured man is a reflection of all men in this world, in their fallen condition of sin. The robbers are Satan. These robbers, they are Satan himself. Attacking man with the intent of destroying their relationship with God. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's those kind of robbers. And the lawyer is mankind without true understanding of God and his word. That lawyer was asking Jesus this question. They just think that they know, but they know nothing. They know nothing, okay? They know nothing. Okay? That's the representation of that. You get the point? And uh, apart from that, Apart from that is that uh, uh, the priest is the religion in an apostate condition. These religions, the priest, okay, do I have a picture here? Let me let me show you here. Uh, okay. Let me check. Sorry, sorry about the phone. The priest is that kind of person who is just uh, an apostate. It's the religion in an apostate condition. And the Levite is legalism that instills prejudice into the hearts of the believers. The Samaritan is Jesus who provides the way to spiritual health. Although this interpretation teaches good lessons and the parallels between Jesus and the Samaritan are striking, this understanding draws attention to Jesus that does, and uh, it does not appear to be intended to be the intention in the text. Okay, just showing that, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is, 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 is the guy here. That, that's not the main intention, okay? But the intention is to show us about the love. But of course, we cannot uh, uh, kick out that fact that Jesus is that good Samaritan. Therefore, we must conclude that the teaching of the parable of the good Samaritan is simply a lesson on what it means to love one another. Friends, don't just... Say you love, but you don't do. You should love from your heart. If you're a Christian, do it from your heart. Don't just sit down and say, oh, I do, but it's a fake. Let it be true. Let it be real. And that the only way you can know that you are saved is by believing the gospel. Remember this person who was in this tragedy. No one else could save him. Not the Levites, not the priest, not uh, even the lawyer, or not anyone in the world. Not even the beasts. They could not save him. It's only Jesus. Jesus is that good Samaritan. He came so that you may have life. Only through him. Remember, the good Samaritan said, here are two denarius. Meaning, he's gone maybe for two days. Why did he give two? Remember Jesus. It's been 2,000 years since he was here. And he's gone away and he's coming back. And he said that I will pay everything which has been, which you have used. As you preach the gospel, as you do what is right, I'm going to pay you, everyone. And he's coming back. Do you believe in Jesus? Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You need to understand that fact that you are the one who is supposed to be on this cross. But Jesus laid his life for you. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. 
All you need to do is understand that fact and believe it. And my friends, voila, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed this video, please, you can give it a like. And uh, also, you can share to your friends. And uh, also, uh, subscribe and check on the description below. We have a couple of other channels outside YouTube. You can also check and share to your friends. Let people hear the gospel in all avenues, in all places. Let's speak this gospel. Let's educate. Let's speak about the goodness of God. God bless you and have a good time.